Good morning everybody. It is 9:10, December 22nd. God bless everybody in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Alright, I got a little bit to read this morning. Now it's gonna take a little drive, but I don't really feel up to it. You know, we might go on live later on today, you guys. But here we go. Okay. You guys, I'm just thinking, you know. Where it says those who willfully sin and you know if you take pleasure in unrighteousness God will send you strong delusions that you believe the lies okay and uh, you know it's like it says he's he knows our hearts and he knows our minds you know so we just have to get through this the best we can you guys taking and uh, you know comforting edifying all our brothers and sisters we know by the word of God whose eyes are open and whose aren't, and you know, and, and the, as Scripture says, the love of this world and the things that are in it are the enemies of God. He didn't open our eyes to continue in these things, but to be separated from them. You know, this is where we have to separate ourselves. Okay, you guys, the truth has always been right in front of us. When you're reading the Word of God to understand what is happening in the world where Satan is prince of. This is what's happening here, you guys. Satan is the prince of this world. And Satan has been busy, you know. Remember Jesus said your bondage is over, your bondage. And what is it that we have? They're corporations, but corporations are also chains. And spiritually, we know chains are what, um, you know, are what held you old people captive. You know, corporations are run by very wealthy, very rich people. And they also put smaller businesses out of business that once used to support families, you know. Where, you know, there was a lot of mom and pop stores, restaurants. Now they're all corporation chains. Okay? Okay. <clears throat> Matthews chapter 7, 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be that go thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You guys, you ever notice like Hollywood? It's called Broadway. And we know what scripture says. That's why I say, if you guys, you look at what's in the word of God, and you look at what's in the world. The world, you know, when people are loving of the things that's in this world, it's definitely not the narrow path. This is, it's all, this is all designed to, uh, why do you think so many people can't see right now? They're blinded right now. And it's because of this, everything that's in this world. I've talked to pastors that don't even know a lot of what's in scripture, things that they should be knowing. You know, when Jesus said, destroy this temple, that our body is the temple, you know? They don't even know that the, uh, the DNA structure that they discovered in 1955 has 46 um, chromosomes in the human body, 23 from each parent. And uh, when Jesus said, destroy this temple, the Pharisees, get this, it took 46 years to build the temple that the Pharisees um, ran in, okay? And Jesus was talking of his body, the temple, not the, uh, not the building. And today, you guys, in scripture, we read it saying the man of perdition standing in the temple of God. It's the body, the temple. The body is the temple. That's why it says, what, what does the temple of God have to do with idols? Okay, when people are going to concerts and they're worshiping, screaming and hollering at these these, these are people that sold their soul to the devil to get their best life now, this music that they're singing. 
you know? Those are idols. And the body is the temple of God. That's why it says, you know, when you read the scriptures, it says, what does the temple of God have to do with idols? It don't. You guys, and the things of this world, we have to be separated from it. Listen, the storm's already here. There's a spiritual battle going on. Those of us who have our eyes open, we see perfectly well. We know what's going on. And we already heard the man of perdition. The rest of the people haven't heard it. They don't know. They're clueless. And we've heard Obama sit there and mock, saying we don't need a savior. We don't need a messiah. Nobody else picked up on this. Nobody. You know, this ain't Coachella. It just went over the top of everybody else's head. And it's because of the cares and the things of this life. Yeah, and the world is designed that way to make you, you know, the technology is always changing. You know, trying to further pull you into it. You know, that's why we have to let these things go and be ready to get out of here. Revelations 12, 9. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, which deceived the whole world. Us too, you guys, deceived us all. We were all deceived. As it says in Ephesians 2, we were dead in our sins when he quickened us in with Christ. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Reading the word of God and looking at what is in the world, it's easy to see why the world is deceived. Everything is made up to fill the pleasures of man. Jesus said he knew what was in the heart of man. Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You know, he'll guide you in everything, you guys. You know, with everything that's happening right now, this is where your faith is very important that uh, you separate yourself from this, fully trust and submit yourself to him, okay? Many people are still submitting themselves into sin, you know, fornication and stuff like that. They're still doing it, you know? Broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. James 4.4, 4, you adulterers and adulteresses, Know you not that the friendship of the world is an amenity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Is. John 12, 31. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's when Jesus um, took away the sins of the world. And he defeated death. Okay, but now Satan's fully back here. He manifested in here because of the people's hearts. You know, the things people started wanting and loving and lusting. They let the darkness come back in. You know, it manifested here. This is where people are manifesting right now into God into obedience or they're manifesting into the devil in disobedience. Okay? Those who sin are going back under the law, okay? That's disobedience. Evil pursues sinners. This is why you can repent of your sins. But you know what? Anybody, if they're going to be telling anybody anything, they ought to be warning you to. You. If you, and he knows our hearts. If you take pleasure in unrighteousness, they'll send you strong delusions to believe the lies. And those that fear God, depart from evil. Okay? So, if that doesn't, and his word says, with, with temptation, God also makes a way for you to escape it. And it's through Christ. It's through the power of Christ. We have to draw near to him and come out of this. Okay? Because the world you're going to want to, you're going to lust and love. And, you know, this is where we're being separated. You don't want to be a part of this no more. You know, I don't celebrate these holidays, none of this stuff. I don't read it in scripture. There's no place in scripture it tells me to. And the love of these holidays is the love of the world. You know, they say, oh, it's celebrating Christ. 
No, it's celebrate the fat man in a red suit. Okay, that's what it is. And then children put their wish list in a in the Santa's mailing it to Santa, which is Satan. <coughs> People justify their reasoning for everything that they do, you know, and it's clear. Satan's a prince of this world. We see the manifestation of the evil. And even in the churches, man, they're carving out pumpkins. They're celebrating the Hall Christmas, all of this stuff. And anybody that's in the pulpit, they know love of the world. That's even these holidays. It has nothing to do with the Word of God. This is all Satan's uh, stuff to keep you more in tune with him. Okay? Revelations 12.12 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. One only needs to look around and you see people have let this world be infested with darkness which is evil. You know, you got people in the church that say, it's okay if you sin. He knows you sin. He came to do that. No, he said there's no cloak for sins. None. Everything's being exposed. These are the terrors. The terrors will be gathered first. This is what we're seeing with our eyes. We're watching the terrors being gathered right now. Plain as daylight, man. This is Acknowledge God and his word and everything that you see right now. All the enemies are being brought to Christ's feet right now. Right now, the enemies of Christ are all being gathered to his feet. Corrupt governments all over the place. Um, Hollywood, television, they're admitting to be a Satanist, but yet these people, they get out of church, they go home, turn their TVs on, watching their soaps, watching their favorite demonic devil worshipers. They're all, it's all satanic. News. I've been shown in a dream. It's all, uh, they're puppets. They're being driven by demons. I was clearly shown this. Scripture says they're in all the high places. They're controlling everything, even these phones that we use. I'm using, I use them for this. This is all I use my internet and stuff for. Even to watch, you know, like a Christian movie or something like that, sometimes just for trying to pass some time. But don't kid yourself, they're all watered down. They're watered down. And you read the Word of God and you see what they're showing, and it's not accurate. You know, I was literally watching one show, it's called The Revelation, and where these people were fighting against uh, the devil, the demon that was, you know, Satan, or the, the man of perdition. Well, his shirt, he had a number 11 shirt on and his shirt said watered down. You know? I mean, it's right there. If you, you guys, you see it all. There's just big deception. Watched another Christian show, uh, The Black Horse or something, where uh, it was, came out in 2014. I could see all the chemtrails in the sky all around them while they're acting. You know? And what they're doing, it's not accurate according to Scripture. It's just not. You know, and yet they call it, um, you know, I forgot what it's called, but it's supposed to be like Christian television or whatever. You know, TV is TV, you know. And I'll be glad I don't get into it. I just don't get into it. Actually, it's feeling more and more wicked here. All right. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. They shall deceive many. Many false prophets shall arise, and they shall deceive many. For there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and they'll show great signs and wonders, so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Matthew 24, 4, 5, that's what that was. 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1, 2. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, 
having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You guys, when I hear pleading the blood, I don't read it in scriptures. So I immediately shut that, those people off. I had a lady one time tried to trip me with her cane when I was walking by, and then she started trying to plead, plead the blood on me. I'm going, ma'am, I said, I don't follow that. You know, I know I'm covered, sealed by the blood of Christ until the day of redemption. You don't need to do that. I don't, I don't have nothing pleaded on me like that. I don't follow that. It's not in scripture. There's a lot of things you guys going on out here. It's not in scripture. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. Acts 20, 29. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 through 15. Hear that, not... Now, this is what I'm saying. You hear that? They're not sparing the flock. They are ruthless. They will tell you what you want to hear while not warning you what the scriptures warned about. Now, here's 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 13 and 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves unto the apostles of Christ. Don't marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, the man of sin be revealed. Now you guys, I want to remind you something. Do you think this man of sin is being revealed to those that are still asleep? That are still following the ways of this world? That are going with the flow? No. They don't see nothing. They don't even hear us. What well, we're trying to warn them. So who is it that he's being revealed to? He's being revealed to those who had the scales lifted off their eyes. Not to the rest of the world. The son of perdition. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and them that perish, <coughs> because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, stop and consider this, you guys, that he will be revealed. Who's awake and who's sleeping? How can you reveal to them who are blinded or even asleep or under strong delusion? The masses are not hearing what we have already been trying to tell them what we're trying to warn them they don't receive what we're saying not only that we're seeing the change as we get closer to this we're seeing the tariffs being gathered we know all this is about to go bankrupt okay and we know those who go out here and ride and loot and steal those are going to be more tares that are being gathered we know this and we also know scripture says the wheat doesn't go into the barn until all the terrors are gathered first. Scripture says that. So that means we're going to see things. That's why I've been saying 2020, you'll see perfectly clear. Everybody will. Listen, your faith needs to be in the Lord and know that he abides in us. And he doesn't leave unless you grieve him. Only if you grieve him. That's what Scripture says. Okay, so my faith is very strong. You know, remember the Roman centurion that believed by faith? That was it. He didn't believe in all this other stuff. He just knew. And Jesus said, I've never seen any greater faith than this. This is how our faith should be. Strong. Because look at what we already see. What we know. We're not asleep. Unless you're going to fall for these things that we know that's not in Scripture. 
You know, some people probably are falling for it. I'm hearing more and more people saying it. Proverbs chapter 13, 17 to 21. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is help. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. The desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it's an abomination to fools to depart from evil. That's sin. For these people that like to want to believe in it's okay to sin, future sinning. You know, they don't warn against it. They just say it's okay. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. Again, you guys, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, not to make a way for future sinning. And Christ is no sin. Christ has nothing to do with sin whatsoever. Other than those that call on him, he'll wash away your sins, cleanse you to make your way back to the Father. Okay? And you can abide in him. And through him, his power and his might, you can overcome. You just have to resist it. It's a participating event here. You know, you have to resist it. You have to think on things that are pure and holy. You got to take those thoughts captive. Now, those people that are going to say it's okay to sin, even if you have a thought, you sin, they're not trying to tell you how to overcome sin. They're, they're trying to tell you how you are a sinner so that they can make you feel convicted all the time so that you don't resist the devil, so that you don't overcome temptation. See, that's what the devil wants, okay? But if you're reading the scriptures, through Christ you can do these things. The devil wants you to not acknowledge that, the power of uh, the spirit that abides in us. All right. Evil pursues sinners too, you guys. You're not going to hear your future sinners tell you that. They don't want to scare you, you know. They'd rather you to keep sinning. Evil Proverbs 13, 21. And it's not, this is all spiritually inspired, the whole word of God. It's alive, the living word of God. Every word of it, man. Look at what the word of God in the world. It's like night and day. Night and day, the word of God. You know, the more you believe in the word of God and Christ and the Father... And then you look at this, man. All right. Now, here's... Uh, Evil men un understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy okay confess your sins man call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll receive mercy see the devil wants you to stay in him he wants you to keep doing him he wants you to keep secrets he wants you to stay in the dark happy is the man that feareth always but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief Psalms 101 verse 8 I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the wicked doers from the city of the Lord. <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 3, verse 7. But by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire. But for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. You guys, willful sinning is ungodly. Resist that. Don't do it. You can overcome it through Jesus Christ. You can. 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they will soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord. Do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And barely thou shalt be fed. You guys, the day is coming when we won't be around all this evil anymore. And it's just going to be a beautiful thing. Love 
uh, no more of this wickedness. We won't know anything like this. And that's Satan's going to be put away. He won't be around no more for this kind of stuff. It's just going to be a beautiful place. We're even going to be cleansed of this. Even memory of this. And we're just, all we're going to know is love. You know? Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way into the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. That's like guiding your feet, your footsteps. He'll guide you. Okay? Cease from anger. Resist the, rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of who prospereth in his way. Because the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass, cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers will be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Psalms 91, 8-10 Only with thy eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Okay, you guys, that's it. A little over 27 minutes. All right, you guys, God bless each and every one of you. I hope and pray everybody receives something from that. Um, be encouraged, be strong in the Lord, okay? And uh, acknowledge God in all your ways because this is what's happening. God's, um, all the tears being gathered first, okay? This is what you're seeing, you know? You're going to be seeing more tears, you know, when the economy crashes and stuff like that. And I told you, the Lord showed me clearly that we will be, the rapture is going to happen at the time of civil unrest. When that happens, look up. Know your redemption draws near. Just trust in the Lord. He'll make provisions for those that really trust in Him. Okay? Be not of the world. Don't trust in man or anything about man here. Okay? Trust in the Lord. God bless you guys. I love you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.